All right, Matt Raymond, you ready to ask some, uh, answer some questions about uh, websites in the automotive industry? More, more in particular, your, <clears throat> your dealerships' websites? Absolutely. Now, you still sitting with three dealerships? Five. Five dealerships. So yeah, we, what, all, what all franchises do you have and where are they located? So we have, they're all in North Carolina. They start on the East Coast in Swansboro and then come west to Goldsboro, Creedmoor, Salisbury, and Boone. Um, so from the mountains to the sea. How many franchises do you have represented? So we um, are all GM. So we oh, have, GM. yep, some stores are just Chevy and some stores are Chevy Buick and GMC. Do you have, well, I mean, uh, would that put you in a portal situation? Do you have a portal page, portal website for, it's team, right? Team Automotive Group? Yep. That's actually our website is teamautogroup.com to get to like the portal itself where you can pick any store you want to go to. And that's a, that's a, a work in progress right now because we had originally had it as just a landing page um, and we built it out to be an actual website with content and vehicles. And then from there, um, you know, depending on where that vehicle guides you, puts you on that dealership's website. No, let, me, let me back up a little bit because I think you said it. Um, do you have, you have a, a website provider that you work with? We do. Who, who are you working? Who's your website, your third party vendor? Uh, we use dealer.com at this time. Mm -hmm. How long have you been using dealer.com and have they always been on your all five of your dealership franchises or no. So we were, um, we had the CDK stuff when GM mandated, you have, you know, CDK. Mm -hmm. Um, and we used at that time dealer, um, dealer fire, dealer fire. to, uh, to, as a, a secondary website. Um, and when we got the chance to move, you know, we, we were wished that dealer fire would have been a, one of the preferred vendors. Um, but when we got the chance to move to one website, we chose dealer.com over uh, Dealer Inspire or um, CDK, or I forget what the other one was now. And, and mainly the reason was, is um, it's just because of the fact that I had been on dealer.com for so many years and I understood it. Um, and, and talking to people, dealer.com truly had the infrastructure to take us on. Um, you know, and I've heard yeah. some people went to some of these other websites and they've had some support issues and stuff like that. But uh, recently with um, dealer.com, I mean, there, I have a performance manager and it's literally like having a guy in the room next door, or a lady in the room next door that jumps on and fixes something. If I, if I can't fix it, um, you know, and then when you call their support line there, they have a special number and you end up right in the GM portal of people to help you and stuff. So it's, okay. it's been a really good process. Have you, so are you running any secondary or child sites for any of the dealerships? No, not anymore be, be, uh, because of, you know, being able to have dealer.com be one of their preferred vendors with GM. Okay. However, our group page, which is teamautogroup.com is not part of the GM package. So we chose a little bit different of a layout. Um, is that still through dealer.com? But it, yeah, but it is still through dealer.com. So in all in all, you have six websites through dealer.com portal page, and then the five different uh, locations. Correct. Good. Um, I say good. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Matt. <laughs> well, it's good to have, I mean, uh, if you have them all, have you, uh, and, and we'll keep this like, uh, um, I don't want to get uh, like personal because I know sometimes, and I, I don't think it is going to get personal or on kind of the negative side, because you do hear a lot of dealers complain about their website providers, but just from what you've said so far, it seems like you have a very good relationship with dealer.com. Um, so you gave me some, some of the pros of uh, dealer.com. I am going to ask you, see if, do you have one con of your website? Not necessarily uh, the website, but just of, of uh, anything that's going on. Cause you, you gave, I want to say it again, you gave some amazing things about dealer.com that they, they do have amazing support. You have a performance manager that seems like they are just part of your team. It's not something you're stuck on hold or something waiting for that performance manager, but is there anything, there may not be anything, but is there anything that you would change at dealer.com? Yeah. The, the one thing that frustrates me the most probably with their site is, and this is the one thing I loved about dealer fire is that you could type pretty much anything into the search bar dealer fire and it would just grab it from, you know, whatever page it was on. So if you typed in like Silverado, it would just start pulling all your Silverados. Yeah. Um, you can do that with dealer.com and you'll kind of get it, but it's just, th their search bar is a little frustrating. You got to be a little bit more accurate with it. And that, that irritates me. I liked more of the Amazon feel where it's kind of like, let's just guess at stuff yeah. and see what comes up. I have seen the side note on Amazon. Uh, I noticed this just about a year ago and it, it has been amazing for me 
is that I can type in, say, uh, your birthday's coming up and uh, you're what, 35, almost 40? Or are you younger than that? No, I'm almost 40. <laughs> yeah. So I can type in gifts for a 40 year old man on Amazon. Have you done that? No, I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah. And it will pull up, it'll pull up actually gifts that you would give like a 40 year old man. And some of them are even so tied in that it will say like whatever year you were born, like genuine article 1979 or whatever, you know, I didn't do the math that far. So I think that'd be kind of cool for a website. You would have like at a dealership that you would type in a uh, car that can go through mud easy, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that, you're right though. I mean, because that's how consumers are shopping, right? I mean, let's face it in the middle of a pandemic. Circuit, yeah. Yeah, in the middle of a pandemic, everybody had to kind of convert to going online to do stuff. And it's, yeah, let's, you know, or even have it be, you know, where you kind of get that predictive text going, Yeah, you know, where they type 2021 and then all of a sudden, but have it be predictive so that it knows what people search for most on your site. So mm -hmm. for us, we're a big truck market, start popping up Silverado. And then as they type, you know, C, it goes to cruise and, you know, and, can flip around or however it needs to be so it honestly came up because i have a niece that was turning five at the time and i had no idea being a, a man with no children <laughs> what to get a five-year-old girl for a birthday or whatever it was and i remember typing into the google you know great gifts for five-year-old girl and one of those search results was amazon just saying it was there it was basically the search on top of a search and so i thought well, do you know with dealerships uh, i wonder if they run into that kind of thing because there are consumers typing in you know, um, great SUVs for family of six, you know, or family of five or great yeah. SUVs for, you know, smaller. So anyway, I'm, and that's not what this, this is just more of a questionnaire, but I, I, I know you and I, when we talk, we kind of can go into idea <laughs> land. I think you're already probably writing down some notes like, man, I wanted to do this. I want to be able to go to my website. And exactly. Best, best, best vehicles that come in the color black. That's, uh, you know, somebody searched that. Um, so right now with dealer.com, is, is it a contract uh, deal with dealer.com? Month to month with them. Month month. So that, that is something that uh, wasn't really that available a long time ago with the website providers. Is that true? That, that's true. And, you know, and yeah, I mean, you've been in auto long enough too. I mean, the vendors that want you to lock in for 12 month contracts and stuff like that, it's, listen, we're only as good to our customers as we are right then and there. And they're not going to buy from us if we do something wrong or they won't come back if we do something wrong. And so to be locked into a contract with a, a vendor of any sort really is it, it, it's kind of disheartening, you know, because it's yeah. like, what are you doing? And, I, and don't get me wrong. I understand that, you know, there's a lot of building and stuff that has to go in. Right. But now when the websites companies go and say, hey, listen, month to month on that, it starts to really make you wonder, you know, <laughs> what how, how much he's really paying for and things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think I, I do that when I juggle my uh, subscriptions to internet television. Like if I want Hulu for a month, just because the Chiefs, I don't know if you've heard this, going to the Super Bowl, you know, and I want to watch against Tom Brady. Team. Yeah, against your old pal. <laughs> um, I can get it for a month and then I can turn off like HBO or something else. And, and it's just, yeah, it seems like vendors are coming around to that kind of thinking as well. Like this is how people are. They think month to month before they think, you know, long term contract. But you do have dealers out there that if they can save, $500 a month or $250 a month, they're going to sign a contract for 12 months just to make that, that kind of, um, for some reason, uh, that extra 250 a month to go to, towards something else. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, it, looking at it as if I was a vendor, I'd want everybody to want to sign up for a six to 12 month contract. Um, you know, because at least then you have, you know, a commitment, you know, but, but don't you think as a married man, wouldn't you want your marriage to last month to month too? That would keep you like in check, making sure that you're getting good Valentine's <laughs> day presents and stuff like, you know what I mean? You couldn't just lax <laughs> off and just lay on the couch for, you know, and then your wife's like, sorry, I'm not renewing my contract with you <laughs> my month to month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think those of us that are married, uh, definitely have a, even though it's a, it's a lifelong, uh, contract commitment. I, I think there's definitely a month to month stipulation in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the extra rooms are for. Like you're going to live in that room for a while. Do you, are you guys doing a team? Uh, are you doing digital retailing on your, on your sites? We are. Um, so we, we are on digital retailing. We did shut off the finance portion of it when it came to products and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, because we, we run a strong finance team. Um, our, one of our finance managers is number one in the state right now for, um, you know, product penetration and stuff like that. And that's, we're really a kind of a back end heavy store. Um, so we shut that off because we couldn't get it to jive. Right. It's a project for me in 2021 to make it 
appear and be priced right. Um, are you using a vendor for that as well, or is that we, open with uh, dealer.com? We are on dealer.com for that. Um, the weird thing is, is, and Kristen was in a meeting yesterday and somebody was talking to her about it and they said there was a company and I told me to dig into it a little bit more. I can't remember their name now, but they, they said that they were with Cox and stuff. So I'm not sure if dealer.com is not like white labeling their stuff, like somebody's making for them in the back. Yeah, I'm um, listening. I've, I've never heard dealer.com with the, with the digital retailing app. We talked about this a little bit. I've heard, you know, uh, Roadster or, um, Autofy uh, was another one. Autofy has kind of been out there uh, yep. a bit with some advertising. So yeah, I'd have to do some research as well to find out what's being white labeled by dealer. It could be something that's not even on the market that you could just buy as a, sing a standalone. So, well, and, and that's just it. And so, you know, and she wanted me to dig into that because they did a little bit of a demonstration in this talk and she was really impressed by it. And let's face it, sometimes the manufacturer gets involved in things and there's a really good product and then they want to put their label over it and they kind of screw it up in the process. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something I want to dig into. And I do know that there's other products out there um, for digital retailing that just kind of flow a little bit smoother. Um, so again, it's kind yeah. of that Amazon thing. Have you looked at, have you looked at sites? I know it's a, a negative word to say to a car dealer, franchise car dealer, but Carvana, have you looked at their websites or have you looked at some of these that are kind of the, the car maxes that are out there that their websites are actually changing? They're becoming more slimmed down because I made a joke on, I think LinkedIn or Facebook about a month ago about what's the over under on, on a call to actions on a VDP page on a standard franchise dealership. And nobody knew it. And I think it was like nine. But if you look at a, at a Carvana, it is slimmed down. Is that affecting how you are building out with dealer.com, your website? We are kind of handicapped in the sense that um, what we can and can't do with some of these GM sites, that's the that's downside. So it's the um, OEM that's coming in to, to make that decision for you? Yeah. And, you know, and it's... Uh, <laughs> How I gotta, frustrating is that? Is that frustrating to you? It it is frustrating, you know. And I was I was talking um, to Kristen, and we're actually going to meet a little bit later on this. Um, but we really got to watch out for these Carvanas and Vrooms and whatever else out there right now, because if I was running the, one of those companies right now, other than new vehicles and franchise, I had a, something in my head, and I'm, I'm not going to share it yet because Carvana won't pay me for it, and they'll steal yeah. it. But <laughs> But they're listening, they listen to my stuff all the time. I'm just going to their life. <laughs> but so easily, you know, they could take over these, you know, this market share because they, because the OEMs require us to do so much. They don't say, you know what, you're a good dealer. Just go out and do it and make it happen and sell us a bunch of cars. And by, I, I'm of the mindset that if you're a dealer and you don't have your crap together in 2021 and you don't know how to go digital and you don't know how to attract people to your store, it's probably a really good time to make two decisions. Either go out of business or sell while the market's hot. Mm -hmm. um, Adapt or die. Exactly. You know, and so it, I'm just... It just you feel like it's a mom or a dad that's standing above you telling you how you need to have your room cleaned or, or how you... And you're like a 25-year-old man that's you know, not living at home anymore and they're just like... You know, you need to clean it better. Like you need to get out of my house because I'm doing just fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm like, guessing that's what you seem like with your frustration. Is like, listen, because I, I know you, people know you in the industry. You know your stuff. You're working with one of the most progressive uh, uh, DPs, dealer principal, general. You know, with Kristen that I've met, and it's almost like GM. I'm I'm not wanting you to put words in your mouth. Like they almost put handcuffs on you because they're treating you like a dealership that doesn't have that kind of thought power that doesn't have that progressiveness so i i'm going to explain to you the best and i got dealer.com to laugh at this the other day they gm has this d2c2 platform and it operates similar to v auto you can price your cars in it you can do your special you know you can do your discounts and stuff like that and it pushes to the web well we're on v auto so they'll v auto will integrate with d2c2 but this is the equivalent of when you have an oem with this many different packages that you have to use and then still use your stuff, right? It's like going down the street and buying a uh, Chevy Silverado. Let's say it's an LT and it's black. And then there's an identical Chevy Silverado to it. And what you do is you get in the driver's seat of one Chevy Silverado and you walk across to the passenger seat to climb through the window to get in the driver's seat of the other one and drive away. I, I mean, that's what the yeah. OEMs are doing. And this is, I mean, I was with Toyota for eight years too, and they're a little less restrictive, but at the end of the day, like sometimes they duplicate products and I'm like, what are we doing here? Like if I, 
if I'm a dealer principal and I don't hire people smart enough to right. figure this out, then I have the wrong people. Do you, is it, and, and I don't want to put it on, um, what I don't want to just turn into like a smack talk session or about right. the OEMs or about any kind of vendors or anything like that, which it's good to hear that you're very pleased with. Um, but the, what is, is it, you can't, and f forgive me, I've never been on the, the, the retail side. I've always been on the vendor and the, the, the providing these solutions is, do you, ha you have to, is this, you ha it's a have to, it's not a, you're going to get extra money or this, or they're going to give you co-op money because you're using a, a, a vendor that's been, you know, certified and approved by them. It's you have to, right. With GM. Yeah, you ha you have to use you have to have one of their their sites. I mean, you could technically run a double site, but again, we're kind of you know you do a child site if you wanted to, and just have yeah. that. Like back in the day when nobody liked the Ford sites, and they had their own Ford website, and then they had that one that was buried by whatever Ford director. Right. Okay, you could do that, but it's just. But 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 why by why do that right? We have so we know who the powerhouses out there are with Google and Facebook and stuff like that, right? Why are we creating a site now that I've got to I've literally got to pay an SEO team to go in and fight my own store, yeah, to you know to bury it and and I, listen, I you know our GM reps are awesome people. They really are, and they listen to they get all the feedback they can. I just think there's a real bad disconnect when you look at like what's going on at corporate headquarters of all OEMs. Yeah. And what's going what, on? Yeah, we don't want to pick a on the ground. GM here. It, exactly. You know, it, it's just there's a disconnect there. And the, instead of showing up to the dealership and saying, "Sit down and show me your day." Well, let me show you. Here here's here's our pain point. Um, you know, and then even with customers, right? I mean, we we sit there when I, I always, I always liked it when I could get a customer somewhere in three clicks or less. Yeah. And, and people call up, you know, they'll call up sometimes and they'll talk to our BDC and they'll be like, Oh, I'm frustrated with this on your website. And I'm like, I need them on the phone. I want to talk to them because that's feedback, right? That's how we, that's how we figure out what's going wrong. How do we, how do we change this? You know? And, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's been better. It's gotten better over the years. It's just not there yet. They're still treating you like, teenagers that don't really know what you're doing and they're and that's because there's you know there are people out there that don't know what they're doing they've you know there's a you know it's we like to say if they're not you know if if they're not gonna you know adapt and grow then then sell but we also are in acquisition mode so anybody that wants to throw their hand up and say you know what we want out we're over here going we got a checkbook you know we're ready to go um and and so that's you're right. It's, it's kind of like that, you know, your parents come over to your house for Thanksgiving and then tell you everything that's wrong with your house. You're yeah. Like, Whoa. <laughs> I have a better analogy and tell me if this sits, cause I was raised with analogies. I was raised in North Topeka, Kansas. I mean, if you can imagine, I mean, you're in North Carolina, but you're a, you're a, you're an up back East guy, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm out in the middle of the prairie. I mean, I, I grew up with Laura Ingle Wilder and all that, you know, no, I didn't. <laughs> we actually, we had to pump water out of the Creek. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I've watched movies uh, about military and I've seen these things about military where if one person screws up in, in, in a, in a patrol or in, a, in you know, in basic training, everybody's got to do the pushups. Does that feel like what you're doing is that there are dealers out there that don't really know what they're doing and they're screwing it up for the, for the, for the dealers that are like you and Kristen that know what you're doing. You're like, Oh God, now I got to do 50 more pushups. Cause this guy doesn't know. And those pushups may be being having compliance regulations on your websites that you want to do. Like, let me ask you, have you heard of like single page application versus multiple page application when it comes to websites? I have not. Like Facebook would be a single page application. Where you um, just keep scrolling, scrolling. Yeah, single page application versus, um, so it's an SPA versus an MPA. And they're, they're starting to blow up. They're starting to become like, holy shit, this is becoming the, and I don't see GM jumping on that for a very long time because you still got these, these screw ups in the, in the <laughs> in basic training that you're having to do push ups for, right? So, yeah. And, and here's the thing. I mean, so you've got, we, we, we kind of screw up the websites to begin with. I mean, right. We're, we're so hundred percent sales focused and I think it's 67% of our traffic that comes to our websites looking for something, some phone number to call service, to set up a service yeah. appointment, you know? And, and so, but then you got this little blip on service. And again, you know, let's put our oil change page in because we're trying to build content and let's put yeah. this and let's put that. But at the end of the day, like if dealers just realize that a lot of this content doesn't need to be visible to customers to get your, you know, get your stuff for Google just to see it and understand it. But 
I, I mean, really is two pages, put your uh, three pages, right? New cars, used cars and service. Yeah. And like you said, just let, just scroll and scroll and have a killer search bar. You know, the, you, can... you know, the best thing about a, um, an SPA, a single page um, application. What would that be? It's fast as shit, dude. Well, that's true. Cause it's yeah. fast. I mean, fast. We're talking. Yeah. Bink. Now we had that when we were with dealer fire, they had, you know, for like you just scroll and scroll and that it was great. It was also frustrating because like, as you went, like it was, it was almost like it was so fast. Like you couldn't keep up with it. And it was like, <laughs> crap, where was that car? You know, versus going, Oh, okay. This car's on page three. I'm going to go two pages, yeah. forward, you know? So fast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see what happens when dealers start getting a hold of those SPAs. Right. And they're like, Whoa, how did I ever, I mean, it's, it's like dial up versus, uh, uh, whatever I have Google fiber here. I mean, it's, it's totally the AOL back when I was, you know, in my late twenties, <laughs> you know, versus yep. now it's just like, let's get in, let's get in just a, um, I want to get your personal take, you know, how long have you been in, in automotive now? 2010. So 11 years. And you didn't start, you didn't start. I mean, did you start like moving metal, you know, physically like out there selling cars, waiting for ups or did you start in the internet department? So I, I was, I was hired as a salesperson, um, but I, I don't sit still well and I don't do, you know, looking out the window and, yeah. you know, smoke so a just, cigarette on the side of the building, you know, like that? yeah, no, I'm, I'm out <laughs> Wait for the hot dogs to get cooked by 1130. <laughs> exactly. So I asked, what can I do? And they're like, I oh, just go in the back and start calling. So this guy gave me a binder and it was like, I don't know, four and a half inches thick. And he's yeah. like, just start calling those people. They can upgrade. And I Ooh. just started making phone calls. And my first month I sold 13 cars and it was just by dialing and getting people to come in. Dialing, smiling. Yep. And I'm like, wait a second, there's something to this. Yeah. And within a month I was, I'm sorry, within a year I was running the, the BDC as the BDC manager um, with one other agent at 35 units a month. And um, by the time I had moved into my new position, we were at 12 agents doing about 175 a month. Wow. This was in Pennsylvania. That was in Pennsylvania. Yep. Wow. And then Kristen reached out to me to look at an opportunity down in North Carolina. So you moved the family. I uh, did. Yeah. And you moved to Beverly. I don't know. That's a different song. <laughs> um, now, my question is, this is something that just kind of hit me when I started about doing this uh, kind of like, um, I want to talk to some of my dealer friends that are out there, especially in the internet department to find out about websites. Because when I first came on into the automotive industry, it, I mean, kind of hardcore. I, I worked in radio, helping local dealerships and stuff with their campaigns, you know, but I'm talking about the SAAS when I was with Venn Solutions, when we we're building Venn Solutions as a CRM company and we had the websites. It seemed like in 2011, 2010, you couldn't get consultants and you couldn't get anybody to stop talking about websites. Like it just was on all the forums. This is back when they had their own separate, you know, dealer elite had them. Ralph Paglia, may rest in peace, had his own, you know, ADM. And it was just all about websites and everybody was talking. And, then, and it just seemed like it just stopped, you know, in the, the late 2015, 16 or whatever, 18, getting up there. And nobody talks about websites anymore. Why, why is that? Why do you think that websites, it's now, now it's, it's like, I don't know what the new shiny thing is. Digital retailing or what is it? And, and forget COVID right now right. like what why why did why is website seem like it's not become a, a priority for dealers i because because websites are cruise ships let's face it right like if if i go out and buy a boat or i go out and buy a cruise ship which one turns easier uh -oh. and, and websites a lot of people don't understand it i mean it's hard to find you know somebody on that you could have on your staff that knows the coding and all that and then really the website companies have pretty much everything locked down, right? They're not going to give you access because they don't need you breaking in it at 5 p.m. on a Friday because you think it's a good idea to put in an oil change pop-up, you know? But doesn't it, shouldn't you have that access? You, you should. You should have all the access you can. But the problem is, and, and I'll defend them on this thing, is that you get somebody out there that doesn't know what they're doing and they just royally screwed up. I, I mean, just royally screwed up. We had... I feel like um, that's a place where a vendor can make a lot of money on the repair. If I screw up my furnace at my house, right? If I screw it up because I'm down there with a the, with a wrench, you know, and they have to come out and do a house call and charge me fifteen hundred dollars to fix my screw up. Who's yeah, calling? There's a mine. You, you're one hundred percent right. But here here's the issue, right? That if if Joey screws up his furnace, 
Joey's the only one that's going to freeze, not, you know, Joey and oh, his 50 okay. other employees, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point right there. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You got, so, it just takes one person that can ruin the lives of, um, you know, the professional lives of no money coming in, can't sell any cars, blah, 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 50 other people at the dealership, no ROs being set up. You know, I, I get it now. I see. But, <laughs> so but you I guys think, are putting child locks on. They're putting child locks on your website. They are putting child locks on the website, you know, and it's, and they do, you know, and then you got the, and I, this was another OEM that I worked for, you know, but you got them pushing down silly things, right? We're going to put a pop-up on there. Did anybody open this thing up on their smartphone and say, mm -hmm. this doesn't work, you know, or, you know, even website providers. I mean, just sometimes I don't think they, they I don't think they put it into R and D, you know, they just right. kind of think of it and fire away. I'll let you get back to work. I'm, I'm hearing the dings going off. I don't know if it's your phone, my phone or what's going on, but that does make sense. And, and thanks for getting me. I want to talk to more. Who would you recommend I talk to next that, that knows a bit, you know, it's working in the, in the dealership and knows a bit about websites that I could kind of have the same conversation I just had with you. Yeah. Um, if you can get Kevin Burns on the line, Kevin Burns, I'm going to, yeah, Kevin Burns. That sounds familiar. I think I've talked to him before, yeah. not in a, in a way like this, but He's a good dude. And the thing with Kevin is he's got a, he's got a digital marketing background. Like, like I believe he went to college for digital marketing. Okay. Um, Where's he at? What state's in? He's in Florida now. Okay. So he's at a Ford store down there and um, he'd be a good one. And then um, mm -hmm. if you can get Mike Warwick on the phone out of Massachusetts, yeah. he, he, I mean, he's he, smart, smart guy and just a really cool dude. Um, He'd be another one, but he runs a big group up there. So I don't know yeah. how I know Mike, I know that name. And I, I know I've talked to him um, before I let you go. Last question. When's the last time you guys used that giant check behind you? What was that used for? So funny story. I've got a BDC agent that almost hit 50 units sold last mm -hmm. month. Um, she, she ended up with um, having to be out for some personal stuff and was out for a week and a half, still got close to it, but that check, is now going to be the one that when somebody gets to 50 units, they're getting presented with a ginormous check. That's funny. So that's internally. You guys use that internally. Yep. We're using that internally because it, they get paid uh sold time sold. So you can imagine $50 times 50 sold. How much yeah, that twenty five hundred. Yep. That's pretty good. I, I have no idea if that's right. I think that might be right. That, I think you're right on. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of money. That's good. Yeah. Do they get to keep the giant check? Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that or make it like a traveling trophy type thing, oh, but I would tell you, um, I would let them keep it because what are the, what's that got to cost? Like 20 bucks to make that? Something like that. Yeah. yeah let them keep it. They hang you getting it the ones that will hang it up on the wall and then may give it back to you. Be like, hey, nah, I'm good with this. But the, like, if I got that and you were like, Hey dude, we got to take that back. It's a traveling trophy. Yeah. Go, go buy a new one, Matt. Cause this one's coming home with me. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to do that. Serious. I would take it. They'll be like, can I, can I put this into AMC stock right now? <laughs> oh. hey, it's back up this morning. I don't know when anybody's listening to this or watching this, but it's back up this morning. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah, I, I saw that everybody, the first thing they were doing this morning is buying Ooh. shares. I'm like, whoa, 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 let's get back to work, guys. We need appointments. <laughs> yeah, I'm not buying any right now. I'm going to hold off just because I did it yesterday. Hey, Matt, thanks for talking, man, and talking websites. I appreciate it. Um, this is cool and getting me hooked up. I'm going to call Kevin. I'm going to call Mike, set something up. So, Matt, have a good day, man, and uh, move some metal. All right, bro? You too. Thanks, sir. Oh,